G'day everyone, Mike here, returning for cycle two of the tutorial scenario for Voidfall. Uh, during the first cycle, we managed to expand the sides of our fleets a little bit. We managed to establish ourselves more in our outpost sector by installing a star base and a sector defense, and we also put in an extra farmer's guild, and we also managed to increase the population in our outpost sector. Now we are moving into cycle two, uh, where the uh, objectives are going to change for us a little bit. Just to remind you, we do still want... i still got my camera set up. I do. We do still have uh, uh, the same starting agenda. So we need uh, pure sectors. We need to control pure sectors. We need to have sector defenses in pure sectors. And we need to have shipyards in pure sectors. So those are two things, uh, three objectives that we currently have. And those things are going to score us influence. We also started on 10 influence over here. Um, but we're up to 25 on our mission to try and get 120 by the end of cycle three. So we're a third of the way through the game, but we're not a third of the way through our points. But that's to be expected because as we gain more agendas, our opportunities to score are going to go up as well. Let's um, let's investigate uh, the start of cycle two. So we can get rid of this cycle one card because uh, that is no longer relevant. And let me flip this back over. This is going to come over here. This is the cycle two galactic event. We will flip it over and have a look at it properly in a minute. But I said at the beginning of cycle one that we only did step four of the preparation phase. Now that we're in cycle two, we've got to go through the full preparation phase. So if I zoom in just a little bit so you can see here, uh, step one during cycles two and three is we remove the bottom most trade token. Or we remove a trade token from the bottom most space. Uh, so you can see this very bottom most space is never full. Uh, uh, so no matter how many players you've got there, uh, or I can't tell if that's three players or not. But anyway, the, I mean the... Um, tabletop simulator module sets that up for us, so I've never, never had to worry about it. Um, but we just remove it. It just comes out of the game. Forget about it. Um, so the trade opportunities go down as the game goes on, and then obviously as players start taking these, uh, we are going to... Um, the trades will become limited. Now when you gain a trade token, you can take the reward listed to the right of it, or you can take any of the rewards listed below it. And you always have to take the bottom most trade tokens. So here, if I take this trade token, I would get two resources of the basic resources. And you can mix and match. So I could get a food and a, and a minerals. I could get a, a um, materials and, a, and an energy, however I want to do it. Um, but if, say, another player had taken that trade token during uh, the first round, and it is uh, during the first cycle, and it is possible... Uh, to take trade tokens in the first cycle. I just didn't want to explain trade tokens uh, while I was already explaining so many things. Then if I was to gain a trade token, then I would take this one and I would get the re reward next to it. So I could take two credits or two science or two of any of the basic resources or one of these, which is a bounty token. We'll see these in a minute. Uh, or uh, one science. You can always take one science. It's the, the bottom reward. And these rewards kind of get better as you move further up the stack. But the start of a cycle, you ditch one of the trade tokens so that there's fewer of them in the game. The rewards in general get better, but the opportunities for trade go down amongst the players as the cycles continue. Step two. Uh, so during uh, cycle one, the, the TTS module set this up for us so we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, there is this little... Um, thing here that uh, adds these, uh, that covers up these advanced technologies. So these advanced technologies in cycle two become available. So now we can uh, actually, uh, we could research these technologies. In order to get one of these advanced technologies, you need to have the basic technology that matches. And uh, there are eight technologies in our technology stack. Let's scroll over here and we'll scroll up a little bit. Let's um, Actually, let's put a number here. We're going to create camera four here now. Uh, hopefully that worked. It did. Okay. So there are eight basic technologies in the game, and there will be an advanced copy of each one. So these are the basic technologies that are available in this game. I didn't explain them in the first cycle because you can't get them. Um, but we will look at getting a technology in just a moment. Uh, this over here is the uh, the agendas that are available to us. I have had a quick look through these to try and formulate some kind of plan because uh, otherwise I was worried I would spend too much time deliberating and, and not spend enough time uh, talking to you, the viewers. 
I guess I could explain my deliberations as I go, but uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to spend another hour going through another cycle. So those those agendas are available to us. Uh, uh, technically in cycle one, but we had no way of getting them in cycle one. Step three is we determine player order in a one player game. That's easy. I will go first. Uh, there are no other players. So that's, that's really my only option. Uh, if you're playing to, uh, with more players, then, uh, you go in increasing order of influence and you get to pick where you want to go on the play cycle. So if anybody had, uh, more than 25 influence, then they could decide to go first, or they, they might decide to go last, however, however they wanted to do it. And then step four is exactly the same as cycle one. We just flip over our galactic event card. This is through enlightenment. So we've gone from the ashes to through enlightenment. Read the tutorial for cycle two in the compendium, already done so. And then uh, another one of these solid line boxes with um, the, the four people on it means that everyone has to complete these steps. We have to discard four focus cards. So just like cycle one, we're going to have uh, options that aren't available to us this time around. Now, unfortunately, two of these are cards that we, uh, focuses that we did have available to us in the first cycle. So production and reinforcement. Um, I, I think I said at the end of cycle one that I would dearly love to do production again right now uh, because I'd managed to increase the population in my outpost sector. But uh, you can't. In cycle two of the tutorial, there is no production card. So let me get rid of these cards. It is production, progress. I lined them all up on the side here. Uh, reinforcement and temptation. And we discarded progress and temptation last time as well. So we haven't seen those focuses yet. Let me just... Whoop. Sorry. Sorry, didn't mean to make anybody dizzy. Let me just go and put them over here in my discard pile. Uh, so that we don't have to think about them again. And then we can see we've got five focus cards this round uh, that are going to be available to us this cycle. Uh, but we can only play four of them. Remember I said it's important to keep an eye on how many focus focuses you can play uh, in a cycle? We can only play four of them, which means one of these isn't going to get played at all. I haven't decided yet which one isn't going to get played. I've kind of figured out what my opening move is going to be, but I'm, I'm not sure beyond that. Okay, so that's the, the first uh, action, or really the second action. First one, read the tutorial. Second one, discard a bunch of cards. Third action, because it's in a dashed border, is optional. Now, I'm not sure why anybody would choose not to do this, but you do have the option. Maybe it's just an excuse to explain that a dashed border means optional during the tutorial. So, uh, what we need to do here is activate a fleet power and or gain a basic technology. So, let's start at our Galactic Civilization board and activate a fleet power. Then, uh, I'm going to get to gain a basic technology. Now, in a uh, multiplayer game, you would do this in player order. However, uh, because I'm playing on my own, I will do it in player order. And we just saw that I am the first player. So I will go first, and then nobody else has to pick. So that's fine. I am going to select sentries. I've had a look through these uh, technologies and what they do. I'm going to pick sentries. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to do a bunch of combat uh, this this cycle, if I can. I'm going to invade a few sectors and try and increase the size of my empire. Uh, now, actually, let's just jump back to the Galactic Civilization board and have a look at that symbol again. See that the symbol is black? That indicates that you can only get a basic technology. You can't take one of these advanced technologies. If the symbol was white, then you could take an advanced technology as well. But... If I look at my player board and look at these uh, technology icons, notice the little lock icon next to the advanced technologies. That's because there's a limit of how many advanced technologies a civilization can have. And at the start of the game, your limit is zero. Um, you can see here uh, in between the, the different uh, phases of the civilization tracks are these tier numbers. As you move into tier one and tier two, you unlock uh, one more advanced technology. Now, this is for every track. So if I manage to get this one here, that would unlock the ability to add one basic technology to my civilization. If I move this one here, now I would be able to have two basic technologies in my, in my, um, in my civilization. And then if I manage to push this one all the way up to here, because I've crossed another line here, uh, now I would be able to get three because I've passed three unlock icons, basically. Uh, where were these? Let's put them back. But given our current state, it's not possible to get an advanced technology. And also that wasn't on offer uh, from the Galactic Civilization Board. 
And when you gain a technology, you're going to get all of the things on the bottom here, and then you're going to tuck it under your board, so then you don't get to see those, those instantaneous bonuses. Now, I did just check the rules, and the instantaneous effect is impacted by the actual technology itself. So uh, I'm, I'm going to do a thing in a minute, which... Uh, might look like it's cheating, but I did check the rules just to double check that this is true. I haven't played with sentries before, so I wanted to use a technology that I hadn't used before. So this says that um, I can deploy fleet power into sentry fleets. Uh, so sentries is a different type of ship. At the moment, all we've had is corvettes, but I can deploy fleet power into sentry fleets. And then when I place an installation, I can instead choose to deploy a... Um, a sentry ship instead into the same sector so i can i can choose to drop a sentry in but the instantaneous effects are i get four influence on our way to 120 uh, then i can place an installation which remember because of the way this is worded i can instead choose to deploy a sentry into the same sector and or i can uh, deploy one sentry or one fleet power worth of sentries into my home sector Let's do this second one first. So I'm going to take a fleet power over to my home sector. And then I'm going to grab one of the sentry tokens. Here we go. This is what a sentry looks like. And I'm going to drop a fleet power in here. Now, remember before I said you can kind of freely move fleet power in between uh, bases. That doesn't work between ships of different types. So I can't move this sentry and make it into a corvette. And I can't move this corvette and turn it into a sentry. When you're transferring the, the things around, you always have to have... Um, they always have to be moving in between ships of the same type. Um, fleet stands of the same type. And bear in mind that I can only have two fleet stands at the... At the um, the end of a turn. So even if I end my turn uh, like this, or let's say, actually, let's say I move this fleet stand over here. So now I've got five fleet power worth of corvettes here, and I've got one fleet power worth of sentries. I, this situation is untenable. I can't maintain this many ships in a sector. So my choice is there is I could recall this sentry, um, or I could recall two of the two of the uh, corvettes back into my my active um, back into my active fleet power zone on my on my civilization board but uh, for the minute I've only got two fleet stands and this restriction only matters at the end of your turn so you can always invade into a sector with more stuff and then just recall the excess fleet power if you happen to have it at the at the end there um, that would be especially true if we had carriers um, which let you deploy corvettes into a sector when you go into combat um, but I haven't played with sentries before, so this should be very interesting. Um, the last part of the benefit here is that I get to place a sector defense. Now, I don't think I can even try and place a sector defense in my home sector. I don't think that's a valid target because there are no installation spaces for it. That could be a rules clarification thing. So I think I'm going to have to deploy that sentry here. So I could deploy a sector defense here, but instead I'm going to drop a sentry in. So let's grab a sentry. And grab my last fleet power and stick it in my outpost sector. Okay, so we're good to go here, I think, um, in terms of this galactic event. We have completely resolved it. Now, while we're here, and I'm going to tuck my shields under my board so we don't have to look at that instantaneous effect again, I'll try and get them to line up to keep my OCD happy. Uh, it's worth looking at the other technology that we have. Um, shields. So this says if you have one or more uh, fleet power worth of corvettes present, then you gain one uh, salvo absorption. So I, I did kind of go through combat a little bit at the, at the end of the cycle one, and we will be seeing more combat during the cycle because I'm intending to do some invading. Um, when the salvo step happens and each side is dealing damage to each other, you can, one time during a combat, because you have shields, ignore one of those damage. So normally on the first salvo, you'll just ignore the first damage. This can be a game changer. 
But in order for it to go off, you actually need to have a corvette present. So now I've got two different types of ships. I need to be wary that if I'm in a situation where uh, I only have sentries, I can't use the shields. So I, I, I kind of need to carry around both fleet types when I move places at the moment. There's also this advanced technology that only I've got access to. It's the advanced version of my starting technology. In a three and four player game, uh, you get two copies of your uh, basic technology card. The second copy goes into this tableau of eight. So everyone gets access to the other basic version, um, but only you get access to the advanced version. And this would, uh, the only difference here is, well, I'll get six influence for taking it and I get no other bonus, but that's fine because it's pretty strong. I, I gain an approach uh, absorption. So during, absorb uh, during the approach step of combat, if I have Corvettes present, I can ignore one damage as well. This is really cool. I would love to get this. The other thing to bear in mind when you're actually selecting this technology is, is the advanced version available this cycle? It isn't. Which means, although I took sentries, I'm not going to be able to upgrade them until cycle three. So all eight of those cards are represented by the... Uh, all, all eight of the basic technologies that you kind of start the scenario with have a corresponding advanced version in a deck. And at the start of the game, you shuffle out four of them and cover them with this uh, token, which we've just taken away. And the other four are here. They're going to come in in cycle three. Which means, if I want one of these... I need to get the basic version this cycle. I need to get one of my tracks into, into the first zone uh, in the cycle to unlock an advanced technology spot. And then I need to actually take the advanced technology. That's probably going to be three actions. Uh, I mean, I could have chosen to take terraforming or trade nexus. Those are two things that I have played with a fair bit in other games. In fact, I've played with all four of these technologies in other games this week, which is why I'm picking something different just to see how it goes. What do sentries actually do, right? Because it doesn't say on the technology card, it just says I can get them. So let's look at this combat board again, because sentries are represented here. They're right in the middle. They're a circular, a circular kind of icon. So you can see that uh, in defense, they are going to, um, they're going to deal approach damage um, for each one that's present. So they, they kind of act like a sector defense, uh, but you can move them around, which is really nice. Uh, in, when you're the invader, during the salvo step, they're going to produce one initiative, same as a corvette. But in defense, they do nothing. So you can have sentries out uh, in a sector, and if one voidborn ship gets past, it will destroy the sector and take out all of those ships. Uh, so that's not great. Um, they sound like a great offensive unit. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they, they're good in defense, uh, because as long as you have enough of them, they're just going to blow up everything that comes towards them. But um, yeah, it, uh, that is their weakness, is that once things get past them, that's it. They're, they're going to get blown up. The last thing to look at, like always, on the Galactic Event card is these evaluations. They're going to happen at the, end of the, at the end of the cycle. The rewards for these are pretty similar. It's... Um, Oh, sorry, the, the evaluations for these kind of mirror each other and then the rewards are the opposite side. So if I have nine or more population in pure sectors at the end of the cycle, then I can activate a fleet power and or gain a basic technology. So that'd be good. Getting basic technologies is good. Then if I have three or more technologies, and this is basic or advanced, um, then I can activate a fleet power and or increase the population in a pure sector. I think this is probably going to be the one we're going to be looking at, although because we're planning to tear around the board a little bit and and uh, uh, kick some, some Voidborn scum out of their sectors, it's entirely possible that we'll get this 9, especially because we did increase our population in the first uh, cycle. So we're at 5 at the moment. All we need to do is take this one sector and purify it, uh, and we will satisfy this top condition. And I think... That is enough for us to go into cycle two. And I've had a look through these cards about a million times. I think that is actually what I'm planning to do. Um, I have a few different kind of plans. Uh, yeah, I have a few different plans, but I, I think that's that's a reasonable one for me to do. Um, I had a couple of plans actually, but I'm just I'm just not sure of what order I want to do things in and whether or not I can afford to do them. But I do have five credits, so I think I should be okay because the the basic resources is where I'm I'm really concerned at the moment. 
but I think I should be all right doing this. So I am going to select, I'm not going to go through all of these focus cards. A bunch of them are ones we haven't seen before. The only one that we have seen is uh, 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 this one, the development one. I'm not going to go through the other four. I'll go through them as we, as, as I kind of play them. Um, I'm going to play the conquest card, which is going to allow me to perform an invasion. That's what this symbol at the top here is. Or I can move ships around. Now, I'd kind of like to move ships around because these ships are off in a corner somewhere and they're not really doing all that much. Um, but I think I'm just going to use them to invade this sector. Hopefully this round. Uh, we'll see how things go. And, I mean, I can math it all out, but I'm not going to do that while you're, while you're all sitting here and uh, waiting for me to talk. So, uh, two energy to engage in a sector. Let's pay the two energy and let's... Uh, Let's invade, shall we? I could do these things in different orders, I guess, but I don't want to for a variety of reasons. Um, anybody watching this that is familiar with the game is probably going to point at me and laugh and, and uh, talk about my suboptimal play. Uh, comment. Comment below. I would love to hear it. Um, okay, so I get to uh, move these ships into this sector. Now, I'm going to move both of these fleets into this sector. I could break up this Corvette fleet and leave some behind in the home sector. I don't think I need to. I, 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 we will see, I guess, uh, if I if I decide that I made a mistake <laughs> so early on in the, in the cycle later on. Um, I don't need to leave ships in my home sector. I can never lose my home sector. Uh, so I can I can move all of my ships out of here. If I did choose to attack this sector down here and I moved everything out of my outpost, that counts as abandoning the sector. And at that point, I would uh, I would lose control to all of these resources. So all of these guilds, I would have to tick down my resource dials on them. These two installations that I, I spent last turn painstakingly building up would be destroyed. The Voidborn would move in and the population would become corrupted. So just be aware... Anywhere other than your home sector, you always kind of have to leave at least one ship, uh, one fleet power worth of ships floating around uh, to keep you uh, to keep you in control of that sector. So, what is going to happen here? Uh, should we look at the? Can I can I bring up the combat board? I think I probably can. This is what I want to do. Bring up the combat board. So during the approach, um, I am the invader, and the the Voidborn fleet there is the defender. There is a sector defense tile there, which is going to deal one damage on approach. I can't do anything about that. So there's one sector defense here. I'm going to take one damage on approach. And even though I've got shields, they do nothing on approach. So I am going to lose one fleet power. Let me put it back in my board here. Then we move on to the salvo step. Uh, oh, hang on. I, I should mention that although sentries also provide um, approach damage, they only do so in defense. So because I'm invading, they're not gonna not gonna provide me anything here. Then we move into the salvo step. During the salvo step, first thing is we calculate initiatives for both sides. The Voidborn has one fleet power here. The the shipyard, the um not the shipyard, the sector defense doesn't count for anything, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, the Voidborn has one, I have three, because the Corvettes are going to provide one and the Sentry's going to provide one, uh, because it says so on their board. So the Sentry's provide one initiative on, on uh, an invasion when they're the invader, and the Corvettes provide one initiative always. Um, so this is fine. We've, we've managed to um, win the initiative here. So it's three versus one. I have the higher initiative. I'm going to deal one damage to the Voidborn fleet. Then we calculate initiative for the Voidborn. They have zero, so they don't fire back. Then we go back to the start and uh, check, and there are no ships uh, for the opposing side left. So I win the combat. Now, a couple of things are going to happen here. First, all the installations in the sector are destroyed. They're removed. Um, there are technologies and things in the game that would let you keep them. I don't have those at the moment, so that doesn't do me any good. Next, if there were guilds in this sector, uh, I would get those resources on my production dials immediately. Uh, I, I don't get the stockpile, I get the production, so that when I next do production, uh, it would it would uh, add to that. I also get all of these tokens that are left in here. This is a glory token and a reclaim token. So let me grab these and I'll put them next to my board and we'll talk about them. Uh, no, I don't want to put them... 
Can I just reveal what's on the other side of the reclaim token? I did not. Okay. So, first thing, uh, the glory token, there's a little space for glory tokens here. They go next to my board. When you successfully invade a sector, you take any glory tokens that are there, then you earn influence equal to the uh, sum of all of your glory tokens. So here I've got five. Uh, up to 34. Uh, and at the end of my turn, I can only have four glory tokens. So in theory, if I had got a fifth one, then you score it, but then you have to give one up. It doesn't have to be one of the ones you took. You just have to give one up at the end of the, at the, um, yeah, at the end of your turn. This reclaim token thing is going to give me something cool when I invade the sector. So not every sector has them. Let's jump back to the sectors here. Uh, some of them have got these bounty tokens. Some of them have nothing. Like this sector here is only worth one glory and there's no, uh, there's no other tokens or anything in here. So that's no fun. Um, this one here has a bounty token. These typically have resources or influence on them. This sector has got two reclaim tokens and a, uh, a, a four point glory token. The glory tokens go from one to five. So a four point one is very good. Um, and I would really like to get it. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it this cycle, I don't think. No, I'm not gonna be able to get it this cycle. I'm, I'm not even gonna pretend that I could get it this cycle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just realized I'm not, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do all the things that I wanted to do this cycle, but we'll see. Um, okay, but the, the reclaim tokens uh, will typically, they, they will frequently have things on them like uh, guilds or installations. Um, so you invade a sector and you, you start with something cool in there. So let's go and flip this over and see what we have on it. And here it says, uh, I can put a miner's guild in the sector where this reclaim token was found. That's what the equal symbol means. Or I can gain one resource of any type. Now I just said before, I think I've got plenty of resources for the moment. I, I might curse myself for that decision later. Uh, and even though I can't do production this cycle, I think having this, uh, this miner's guild in this sector could be good. So let's grab a miner's guild and we will drop it in the sector. And then because there's a population of four there, we will get four ticks, two, three, four. We'll get four ticks on, I think I clicked it four times. Please somebody go back through the video and check. Uh, we'll get four ticks on our, um, our materials production from our miners guilds. So now we're up to uh, kind of rank seven and our yield is four. So every time we do uh, production on, on uh, materials, then we will get four, uh, four materials there, which is very nice. Now you do keep these bounty, these uh, bounty and reclaim tokens. There's a space for them next to your board just here. Do keep them because some of the agendas in the game uh, can potentially score for them. So you should know how many how many you have had. The last uh, thing that I want to do, actually, that that is the engage action. That the engage action is now done. So that is how a combat works and how an invasion works. When you do invade a sector, you can invade from uh, anywhere adjacent that you have ships. So if I had a ship, if I had a sentry here, I could invade this sector with both of these sentries. That would be fine. Um, however, I don't have a sentry there. I've got a sentry up there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to explain about invading. Uh, famous last words. <laughs> it might come back to haunt me. We'll see. Um, Okay, and then I get another action. Now I could choose to prepare. Um, it would cost me three materials and I could activate two fleet power. Remember, I do like to complain about fleet power, so that does seem like a thing I might like to do. There is, um, I've only got one materials, but I could spend the other one, the other two in credits, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think what I'm gonna do is this middle action, this strategize action. So I'm gonna spend an energy and a credit and I am going to get to take an agenda and then potentially move uh, move a, uh, a corruption. I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. Whew, we'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I did have a look through these agendas before. When you take an agenda, uh, there's, uh, there's four on display and they're in four different categories. They are... 
Uh, let me see if I remember. Support, might, commerce, and dominance. I think that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that might and dominance are right. Support and, and commerce, I might have wrong there. The thing to bear in mind is that uh, when you are adding them to your board, uh, to your civilization board, you can only have one of each type. The other thing is you only actually have three spaces for them. So you will never get uh, all four agenda types. So you kind of have to decide what you're going to specialize in and um, and uh, what you're planning to do. I think because I'm going to be... Uh, because I'm going to tear around the board with my new sentries and, and burn things up, I think I want dominance or might uh, at, at this stage. There's a couple of other things to keep in mind with agendas, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to have to go back into teaching mode for a bit. Uh, each agenda has an action in the top right. This is an action that you can do when you play the agenda. So when, when you actually play the agenda and tuck it under your uh, civilization board, you can do this action. However, in order to play the agenda, it has to match one of these uh, types of, um, of focus card. And if I look at the focus cards, that is the symbol... I need to not be hovering over something on the table when I try and bring these up, apparently. That is a symbol in the top left corner there. So in order to do this one, I would need the, the starburst symbol, which is prosperity or progress. Now remember, at the start of the cycle, we discarded progress. Uh, so we've uh, we've only got the prosperity one left to play this cycle. It's always a good idea if you can, if you're planning to get an agenda, to try and get an agenda early in the cycle if you also want to play it in the same cycle. Sometimes you'll just play an agenda because you uh, you want to to do it later. Uh, you want to do it in a future cycle. Um, well, you know, maybe you just want to hate draft one so that your opponents don't get it. Uh, there is always one available face up. Oh, hang on, there, there is one more thing with those actions. The action is the same for all of the agendas of the same type. So all of the might agendas have this same action. All of the support agendas have this same action. And um, all of the uh, commerce ones have this action. And all of the dominance ones have this action. So um, you you know what action is available. You know which, uh, which focus cards are going to be associated with them. This top row doesn't change across all the cards. What does change is the scoring conditions on, on each of the agendas. So when you take one, when you earn one, you can take one of the face-up ones, or you can draw two off the top of the corresponding deck, and you can pick one and then put the other one on the bottom of the deck. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do here, because I think, uh, I think I want a might agenda, but I don't particularly want this one. So this one says if I have uh, eight or more science stockpiled, uh, then I get seven influence. Now, I don't currently produce science, so it's a, it's a difficult resource for me to deal with. I've only got three science and I don't have another way of getting it at the moment. So getting to eight is gonna be challenging uh, in this cycle. And then for every pure sector where I've got uh, three or more installations, I get six influence. Now, I do have one sector at the moment with two installations. So I could turn this into, into uh, a sector that's full, but it's actually going to put my upkeep up as well. And in fact, every time I do it, my upkeep's going to go up. I did say I thought I had plenty of food, um, but I don't know that I'm going to have plenty of food for the rest of the game. So I am going to uh, look at these top two might cards and pick a different one. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, so this top one, this mining consortium, says uh, if I have eight or more uh, uh, production, uh, yield uh, from miners guilds, so this is the, the right hand number here. So if I can get to eight or more, um, then I'm gonna earn five influence for it. And then for every pure sector where I've got a uh, fleet power of two or more, then I will get I will get five as well. Um, that seems doable. That that's I'm on my way to that. Uh, this one here says if I have um, and these are independent by the way, I can score the right one and not the left one, or or vice versa. You don't need to score everything on the card, although ideally you want to, right? This is the this is the I'm forming a long term strategy for the game, uh, and in the full game you probably want at least one new agenda in the first cycle to give you some uh, some direction as to what you want to be building and what you want to be putting out on the board. 
uh, this central monetary system says I want four or more production of bankers guilds. I currently have zero, so that that's not working for me. And I have uh, no bankers guilds out on the board. Uh, that would give me seven influence. But then having pure sectors with um, one uh, one or more shipyard or star bases, all those star bases aren't available in the tutorial, are worth two agendas. This right one actually fits in really well with my strategy. Um, because I do already have an agenda that says that I want to have, uh, that I want to have, um, extra stuff out on the board, but I think I'm going to go for the other one. So I'm going to flip this over, put it on the bottom of this deck and then put this deck back, try and figure out where it is with the shadows. And then I don't add it to the board just yet. I'm going to add it to my hand. So it's in my hand, uh, for the, for the next turn. Now, normally in a multiplayer game, oh wait, there was one more thing here, right? So gain an agenda and then move a corruption. I'm going to move this corruption. This might turn out real bad, but I'm going to move it. I could move it from this sector to another sector. So I could go and re-corrupt my outpost sector. I can't corrupt my home sector. See, there's a little icon there indicating that it's immune to corruption. Uh, and I can't corrupt any other sector on the board because I don't control it. I can only put corruption in places I control. So let's jump over to our Galactic Civilization board and I'm gonna corrupt this last agenda slot. There is something that I should bear in mind here though, and this might come back to haunt me, and that's uh, during phase C on the Galactic Civilization board. Let's zoom in and have a look at this skirmish. Uh, this is when the Voidborn are gonna come and attack me. And during cycles two and three, they're gonna attack me with the amount of corruption on my civilization board plus one. So at the moment, if this corruption stays here until the end of the turn, I'm going to get a Voidborn fleet of um, power two coming at me at the at the end of the cycle. Um, so I had better be prepared for that. I'd better have every sector that uh, is a possible target for the Voidborn be able to take that, <laughs> or I might be in trouble. However, that is both actions off of my conquest card. I am one card down out of four for the cycle. So the next card that I want to play, ideally, I would like to get this agenda out. So, uh, and, um, I mean, I'd also really like to get another Miner's Guild out at some point if I can. So I think I'm going to take this, uh, uh, what was the action? The Prosperity action. I think that's right. Let me just check all the things. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure that's right, is that I want to take the prosperity action so that I can play this agenda. So the way this works is when you play the card, you can also play an agenda card with it. I'm pretty sure it's only one. Uh, I'm not entirely certain that that's true, but we will see. Um, so you get to play uh, an agenda card with it. And then I can pick two actions off of this card and I can do this action. And uh, that basically equates to being able to do three actions. And you can do them in whatever order you like. I am going to choose to do the the um, the one on my agenda first, uh, but I don't need to do that. I can I can just choose to. I do kind of have a little bit of a method as to why I want to do that, um, which I'm not going to go into too far, except to say that um, this action, what it says, is uh, move the. It, although it's the middle one, what it's really saying is move the uh, leftmost marker on your civilization track. So if you had um, two things that are equal, you can choose which one you want. Uh, but at the moment, it could only be this growth one. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Um, or the other option is to take a trade token. Now, in this case, if I look, this is my, my uh, leftmost one. And when I move it to here, I get the bonus. The bonus is that it moves forward one. And the bonus on the space that it lands is to gain a trade token. So let's go and grab that trade token. Okay. Now when I grab a trade token, I have a couple of different options. I can take this reward or any of the rewards below it. Uh, I don't think I need a science, although I might be tight on science by the end of this. <laughs> by the end of this um, this cycle. 
The bounty tokens will typically have like a couple of resources on them, but I won't get to pick what they are. Um, but if I did want to grab an agenda later on that would uh, potentially let me um, score for bounty tokens, then I, I might want to do that. I don't think I want that in this case, though. I think I want the two basic resources. Um, so I get to pick if I want to have uh, food or, uh, or materials or energy. Let's go and have a look at our board. I'm just going to drop this here for now. This is not where it lives and it's not where it will live permanently, but I don't actually need to find a place for it until the end of the turn. And then I will actually need to put a, I need to put it somewhere or I, or it gets returned. I will lose it. Um, so I, I don't want that. Let's go and have a look at what we've got here. Um, we're running low on materials. However, looking at these cards, there isn't a lot of call for them. I think in this instance, I am just going to take two food because everything else I can pay for with credits. And then when I get to the end of the cycle, I'm, um, I'm not going to be able to use the credits to pay my upkeep. And I really want to make sure that that upkeep stays, stays high. And I don't have the chance to produce, uh, food this cycle. Although having said that, there is an option on this card, this store action in the middle that lets me produce any of the any of the five resources. I can pick which one I want, and then I just get two of something else. Um, but I'm not actually going to do that. Anyway, this action is done. So I have completed this action. So looking, I need to pick two off of my prosperity card. I'm going to do the top one, which is the flourish, um, which is uh, spend a material. Which I'm going to spend my last material. I know I just said I, I didn't think I needed many, but now I don't have any. But this will move this growth track and it will let me put uh, a new uh, guild out on the board. Now, given that I just picked up this, which is wanting me to have a yield of um, eight on the, on the um, materials, and I did just pick up a sector with a population of four, I'm real tempted to just put another miners guild in there and tick up four times on that resource track. Um, I think I'm just going to do it. I, I don't think I'm going to think about it any more than that. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And now look at that. Our production yield is 10. We have actually satisfied the condition on this agenda. So if this agenda remains pure at the end of the cycle, that's going to be another five influence for us. Um, all in just a couple of actions uh, to get us there. Now, I could choose to take the store action at this point and produce resources uh, and shore myself up. I don't have a lot of resources, so that looks really tempting, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to organize instead. So to do this, I need to deactivate a fleet power um, and then spend an energy and a materials. So deactivate a fleet power. Now I don't have any fleet power. This is actually catastrophic for me, but so be it. Uh, and then spend, what was it? It is an, an energy and a materials. So I'm gonna spend one energy. I don't have any materials. Oop, don't roll over to 15. I don't have any materials, um, but I do have a credit. So I can spend a credit in place of uh, any of the three basic resources at the top here. Then the the action that I get out of the organize, um, or the, the bonnet, the, uh, what do you call it? The reward I get out of doing the organize action is I can take another agenda and uh, I can place an installation. Now, I would dearly love in this situation, it says here that when I get to place an installation, I can instead deploy a sentry. I would love to put another sentry out on the board, um, but I don't actually have that uh, fleet power to deploy because I just had to spend it on the previous uh, thing that I did. And I don't think any of my options here would have allowed me to get more fleet power. No, it doesn't look like it. So... I need a new agenda. Now, I did just play my uh, my might agenda, and I said I probably wanted might and dominance at the moment. Looking at this, uh, having sectors of population three or more, uh, I mean, I do have two sectors that match that description. I would, um, I'd love to get my home sector up, like that's only one away. And then if I could take, say, this sector, that would be another one, uh, but I've got to be able to hold all these sectors at the end of the turn. And the other reward on this one is uh, get any of my civilization tracks, any of my pure civilization tracks, because they can become corrupted, into the third zone. Now that doesn't seem like it is going to happen in the first cycle. 
in the second cycle here, um, I would need one, two, three track advancements uh, for growth, and I've already moved it twice this cycle, so it doesn't seem likely that it's going to get there. Um, I also haven't really been focusing moving one particular track up. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's going to happen this cycle. So I don't like this agenda, this Enlightened Nation agenda. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to flip over our dominance, top two cards, and we will pick something else. Oh, this is not great. This is not great for me at all. <laughs> so what this says, uh, High Society basically says, uh, if I have one sector at, at population level six, uh, then I'll earn five influence. And this one says, uh, if I have that society track um, above level zero, then I'm going to get uh, four influence for every level it is above. So currently it's still in the level zero early development phase. Uh, if I can get it all the way to here, then I'll earn four influence. If I can get it to here, eight, 12, 16. So that, that could be worth a lot if I was focusing on that track. The other one is similar, but it only requires me to get population. It requires me to get two sectors to population five. Eh, I mean, I'm not sure if either of those are likely. Um, and it wants me to get my statecraft track up. Um, unfortunately, neither of those are the tracks that I've just been focusing on uh, on moving forward. So uh, which one do I want? I guess if I go for the population six one and really push this society track. I can start pushing things up here. I do have three opportunities to increase population in that society track. So maybe that is the way to go. And also um, this statecraft one is going to be all about technologies. And I think I'm, I'm going to have good technologies or I'm going to have a decent set of technologies by the end of this cycle. So I think uh, the other thing is I I went heavy into statecraft in a previous uh, game. And although our, uh, uh, let me line these up because I don't know, I give up. Uh, otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. Um, although our origin card um, suggested strategy does say to concentrate on the statecraft track, you can totally win without uh, following any of the advice on the back of these cards. Uh, I played a game yesterday where I had six technologies and I almost didn't use them. And I, I absolutely trounced that game. So, um, while technologies are good and cool, and they do change up what you can do, um, at least in the solo game uh, and on easy mode, because that's how I'm playing at the moment, it hasn't been uh, a big issue. Although, obviously, you will do better if you can take advantage of everything that you've got. Um, this agenda is going to go into my hand. So, uh, that is my two actions on my prosperity card. I don't have the option of doing a third, and I've done my one action on my agenda card. So that is uh, the end of my turn, and I'm just going to return to the galactic board and go over phase B again here, um, just to show you this focus phase. So it is uh, the selection step where you choose a uh, focus card. You can choose to flip a trade token, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, and you may play an agenda. Then phase two is where you actually take the actions. So you get the two different ones off of your focus card, if you flipped a trade token, you can play the third action on your focus card as well, um, which is very nice. And you can also play the action in the top right of your agenda. So that fills out the, the whole of the top of this um, focus phase um, uh, 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 instructions here. The third phase here, this cleanup phase, we'll go through these one at a time again. I can only have two fleet stands in every sector. I do. So I've got two fleet stands here and two fleet stands here. So I'm satisfying that condition at the moment. Uh, I can only have four glory tokens. I only have two. So that's fine. Otherwise I'd have to discard. I have to place an agenda that I've played this turn uh, under my galactic board. So let me take my agenda and I need to put it in a slot. You can put it in any of the three slots, but I'm just going to play them left to right like Come on, like this. Um, obviously, you can play it under a corrupted sector, so I could have put it over here, um, but then it wouldn't score while that while that corruption is there. So that's no good. I don't want that. Um, so I'm going to put that there. Although I would really like to get rid of that corruption before the end of the cycle, if at all possible. Um, then the final part of this is I must place trade tokens on the corner of an agenda that I have in play. 
So let's go and grab our trade token. We do have space for it. So if I were to gain two more trade tokens, I actually wouldn't be able to keep the third one because I've only got space for two at the moment. So I would need to, I would need to um, discard one at the end of my turn, which is not ideal because they they can be a little bit difficult to get. You kind of got to kind of work on it, and um, I don't want to be gaining them and not using them. Now there is a technology in the technology market. If you played the game before, or if you've if you've seen these. Um, well, I, well, I had them on the screen before. If you have the trade nexus, then when you return a trade token, you also get the trade bonus. So you can actually double up on trade bonuses, um, which is a very cool technology to have. I have played with it a few times. Uh, that is the end of my second focus uh, phase round. And I get a third one. So well, I get a third and a fourth, right? There's four in this cycle. So I'm going to have access to four. So... Of these three cards, I'm only going to be able to play two of them. So I kind of have to decide which one I don't want to do. I think... I think at the moment... Oh man, if I had prepared here instead of gaining uh, that first... Uh, but then but then I wouldn't have been able to do that action and I wouldn't have been able to put it there. And and really, ultimately, the reason why I, why I wanted to move this one up uh, was because I had a, the other card in my hand that let me move it again and move it into this zone one. And moving it into zone one means I have unlocked an advanced technology track. So now I could, in theory, have uh, shields. I could uh, pick up my advanced shields. I can't pick up advanced sentries because it is not available on the resource board here. So how are we going to do that? Because we have two different ways of doing that at the moment. If I go in and have a look here, we do have two different ways of doing that at the moment. So if I move up the politics track, this middle one here, the statecraft track, that will get me access to a new technology and I can get an advanced one or a basic one. Um, so that could give me my, my shields if I wanted them. If I um, were to instead play my innovation card, uh, then I can take that middle action, that invent action, and the invent action would actually allow me to gain a basic or advanced technology. So doing exactly the same things here. The other bonus of playing innovation is it would actually allow me to get this, uh, this agenda played because it only triggers off temptation and innovation and I don't have um, my temptation card this turn. Let's look at the other actions on research. I would have to spend two food, which is looking fairly expensive in the grand scheme of things. I've only got six left, and I do have um, I do have two upkeep here. But this trade token also is allowing me to cover off. You can see there, it kind of slots in over the top of the upkeep costs. It allows me to cover off the upkeep of having an agenda. So if I had this completely full and I had four agendas, I could cover all of them with trade tokens and then I have no upkeep to pay for running those agendas and I wouldn't have to worry about food so much. So I'm, I hope you can see the branching strategies in this game and the way that uh, you can approach things in a variety of different ways. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I don't have a good answer for this just yet. I am considering actually just taking this basic decontamination chambers because it's going to let me handle that um, handle that corruption that I've got on my board. And uh, then when I use these uh, move corruption things, like on the, the control on the bottom here, um, I'll be able to move corruption off of the board and onto, onto that card. So I'm thinking that might be something that I want to do. Um, In fact, I might do that. Do I want to take the basic shields first? So many options, so many options in this game. It is, um, I don't want to say it's frustrating. Uh, it is, it is the best kind of, uh, head scratching, uh, uh, pain. <laughs> um, all right, I am going to play Innovation because I do want to put this... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I am going to play the Innovation because I do want to put this uh, High Society agenda in play, even though it's not looking likely like it's going to score all that well for me in the grand scheme of things. So first thing, I'm going to spend two science to invent a new technology 
And as much as those decontamination chambers look good, I think I'm going to upgrade my shields. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to gain these upgraded shields. So it has to replace the basic technology. That's one of the reasons why you have to have the basic technology first. Um, but it will, uh, it replaces it. So you don't end up with more things on the board. What am I trying to do this cycle? I'm trying to have nine or more pure population, which I think I currently do, right? Four, seven, nine. Yes, I do currently, as long as I don't lose anything in the skirmish step. Or I need three or more technologies. So this is not gaining me a new technology in terms of that uh, tech, because all I've done is, is uh, in terms of that objective, because all I've done is upgrade my shields. I will get six influence for it, though. So moving up to 40, we're a third of the way. And let me slot this into my board. I don't think I've ever actually researched my starting advanced uh, technology. So that's that's an exciting turn of events for me. Uh, well, I have, but not, not in the tutorial scenario, I don't think. So all this means is I'm going to get an, uh, an approach um, absorption as well as a salvo absorption. Uh, I, I say that's all it does, but that's actually incredibly good for me. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. Now, do I want to... Do I want to consolidate or do I want to invade? I don't think uh, getting another agenda is going to do much for me just yet. It'll be my last one for the game. I can go and get another dominance agenda and try and dig and find one that is more suited to my current strategy. And then I can replace it next turn, given that this one is probably not going to score at the end of this cycle. Um, but I won't have another opportunity to play it this cycle because uh, it's got to be Innovation, which I just played, or it's got to be Temptation, which I had to discard at the start of the cycle. So I, I don't currently have access to uh, playing another Dominance one. But I'll look at the, uh, the two cards that are left in my hand. I think I probably did want to play Politics. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see on that one. But, um, we, I mean, we will go and get another agenda because they are very good. Um, and uh, maybe we can find one that fits our strategy better than this high society one. Uh, then our uh, final uh, action available to us as research would be produce science and produce uh, credits. I'm not currently producing either of those. So this would cost me two food and gain me nothing here. And then I would gain one influence for each science guild and each uh, each banker's guild. I don't have either of those either. So this, this research option looks awful. Um, so I probably will consolidate, but I'm going to do the invasion first because I kind of want to see how it turns out. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do that invasion then. I'm going to invade, do I want to invade this sector, or do I want to invade this sector? So here's the thing. If I can, um, if I can leave a sentry with a corvette, then the, those advanced shields are really going to pay off for that. So that, that could be very good. I can abandon this sector now that I've kind of, um, I've got it, but I did just invest some resources in building it up. So I probably don't want to do that at this point. I guess I could... Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I could do the development action and take that bottom one and actually harmonize in that sector and bring it up to a five, which would get it much closer to being able to do this. And I am going to evaluate this before the end of the cycle. So if I can get that bottom action, I could get it up to six. I could get it up to six, couldn't I? I'm not going to get my society track into, uh, into section one because I don't currently have any actions that will allow me to advance that track. Although... It is now one of the two furthest behind. So if I did go and get another uh, Might agenda, I could use that effect on the card uh, to get it into its thing, but I don't have both of those focus cards left to me. Uh, this is why it's good to go and get agenda cards early if you can. But I'm going to do the invasion. I think um, uh, they're currently coming at me with two. If I can't get rid of that corruption by the end of the cycle, that's going to be bad. Um, I will get more value out of taking this sector, and it also stages me well to being able to take this sector next cycle. I, I know I can win down here, and I have enough defenses that I think it will be okay if I just leave one, uh, one corvette down here. Uh, let me math this out a little bit. So I would need to leave one ship behind. Um, I can leave, 
I can move in with two ships. We both tie on the on the um what's it called? We both tie on the approach step. Uh so we would fire at the same time, but I do have those shields, so I would um I would save one of my things. Um then and they would lose one of theirs. And on the second uh on the second salvo step uh, I would win initiative with two ships. So I could just move in with the, with just this one fleet with the two corvettes in it. But it does kind of leave this sentry on its own. And at the moment, it's only going to deal uh, one approach damage, which means if I can't get rid of this corruption when the Voidborn attack me in a moment, um, they are going to uh, take that sector back, which would be very bad because I need it uh, to score my agendas. Do I think I'd be able to get rid of that corruption? Let's look at my cards in my hand. I could harmonize, couldn't I? Although that does mean giving up on, on being able to improve there. Uh, no, it doesn't, because moving up the statecraft track is going to give me a basic, uh, which I can use to get the decontamination chambers. All right, I have a plan. Uh, I am going to do this this invasion here. And I am going to move uh, these two corvettes in to this sector. And I'm going to take this sector. So bringing up our combat board again, it's up in this top corner. Let me make it bigger. Uh, they've got two ships. I've got two ships. They're all corvettes. So at the moment, in theory, we're evenly balanced, but they don't know about my awesome shields. Uh, initiative is two on both sides. We both deal... Uh, sorry, we're going to skip the approach step because nothing is dealing any damage in the approach step. This is an all corvette fight. Uh, we both have two initiative, uh, which means we both deal one damage to each other at the same time. I'll deal one damage to them, they'll deal one damage to me, which are blocked by my shields. Uh, because if I have one or more Corvette fleets present, then I gain one shield. So that works out well for me. Second salvo step, uh, I have an initiative of two, they have an initiative of one. I'll take them out, we recalculate their initiative, they have zero. So we remove their fleet token, and I win. Hooray! I'm not sure I'm hearing enough hoorays. <laughs> uh, but we will see. We will see what's happening with that. I will, uh, immediately, because I gained a glory token, I will score, well, because I entered, because I invaded a sector, I will score my glory tokens uh, after gaining the new one. So I will get another seven influence. Up to 47. And then I also get the contents of whatever's in this bounty token. It's one resource of my choice. What choice do I want? Uh, energy, I think. Question is, am I going to do that prevail? Oh, that's actually a good point. That is a very good point. I wasn't thinking about that. Yes, I am going to do that prevail. So that it, that works out even better for me. Um, yes, I am going to do this. Although, am I going to run out of food? I'm going to need another trade token somewhere. Anyway, um, then oh, I probably will because I'm going to consolidate now, aren't I? Oh... Do I have to take both actions off a card? I think I probably do. I think if I take an action, I have to pay the cost even if I forfeit the benefit. I'm not going to go look it up in the rules now. I am just going to consolidate. I'm going to get food, energy, and materials. Food, energy, and materials. Things are looking grim on the uh, the old money front. Um, and then I will gain a new agenda. So I could dig through dominance and look for one that's better. I kind of think, I kind of think I might want one of these uh, commerce ones. Hang on, what are the options here? I mean, being able to do this, this is actually a great action for me because it lets me activate a fleet power and then install an installation. And I know when I install an installation, I can uh, deploy a sentry. So and I will have the fleet power for it because it's right there. So is this something I want to do? Uh, for every two energy guilds, I mean, it would be better if it was um, if it was miners' guilds, right? Because that's what we've just been picking up. So let's let's dig, let's dig through these and see if we find something with miners' guilds. Oh, we don't. Ah, uh, 
I mean, this is good. So if I have two miners guilds and two en engineering guilds, I have three miners guilds and one engineering guild. So I'd only need to place one engineering guild to make that happen. Ooh. Uh, that will get me six influence. And then I'll get one for every sector with a banker's guild. I, I'll get three for every sector with a banker's guild. Unfortunately, I don't have any banker's guild. So that's not great for me. Um, or I could take this one. Uh, have three or more um, uh, pure farmers guilds. I think I've got two. Is that right? Yep. One, two. I've got two pure farmers guilds. So all I would need to do is build another one in order to be able to get that. And then... Uh, have uh, for every one sector that I have with a science guild is worth four. I think I'll take that one. I think I'll take that one. I'm very worried about my upkeep actually right now because I haven't really thought about it overly much uh, in terms of figuring out what my upkeep is going to be at the end of the cycle, which is going to be in one more card. So let's just have a look quickly. I've got one, two, three out on the board. Uh, and I'm about to drop this agenda in there, so that would be 4-5. That is all of my food. I am just about out of resources. I, I almost can't do anything in this final step. Um, but we will see how it turns out. I can take this agenda and I can slot it under my agenda board. Now, here's the thing. If I think this is incredibly unlikely, I don't have to actually slot it into my board. I can just toss it away and put it on the bottom of one of these decks. Um, that is that is an option when I take these things. The problem is, is that I really wanted to use the trade token and take all three actions on this politics card, um, which I can. It's going to cost me just about all of my resources. I think I'm going to get down to zero. <laughs> this is how tightly wound this, uh, this session might end up being. Um, so I did take this, which is a um, uh, requires conquest, which I already played, or reinforcement, which I had to discard at the start of the round. So although the action on it is really good, I'm not going to be able to play it this cycle. So I'm kind of holding that as my my last one here. Uh, yeah, I am going to take this politics action as my final step. Uh, it would be really nice to harmonize and improve this sector to bring it up to a five and get it closer to being able to score that agenda this this round I'm, I'm i'm not doing great this cycle i'm not doing great this game i think i'm trying to talk and explain too much um uh, which is uh i mean that is what it is um okay so i need to take two actions off of this however what what was i going to do i was going to do this when you play when you do your selection of your focus card at the start of the round one of the things you can do, and it's mentioned on your galactic board here, is you could flip over a trade token to take the third action. Take one action, but it can't be equal to any of the others that you've taken for the round. So let's go and have a look at this. If I flip my trade token, it's got that symbol on it to remind me of that. And then at the end of the turn, I'm going to have to return this trade token back to the board. So I won't uh, I won't actually get to, to keep hold of it, uh, to use it to pay for my... Um, my uh my upkeep there which is unfortunate because i would really like to use it to pay for my upkeep but so be it say la vie. i am going to take this inspire action i'm going to spend a science my last science it's all right i think i might be done with with new technologies after this uh to inspire which is going to up my statecraft track by one which is going to let me take uh, an advanced tech or a standard tech or basic tech I'm going to take a basic technology, and I'm going to take this decontamination chambers. Oh, one thing to notice is, or see there's two copies here. You can't have two copies. You, you can't have two copies of the same technology. Um, but the second copy doesn't have the influence bonus on it. Uh, and you might notice when I took centuries before, that doesn't have uh, the, the bonus on it either. So the first player to get the technology gets an influence bonus. The second player just gets the, the ability on the technology. Other than that, they're, you, they're the same as far as I know. Okay, so I'm going to gain this decontamination chambers. It's going to get me four influence. Up to 51. We're on our way. Uh, then it says, I can store up to two corruption on the card. And during evaluation, I can remove uh, stuff from the card. 
So, uh, and the, the bonus here is I can move a corruption. So let's move the corruption onto this card that I had here. All right, that is that action. And I'm almost ready to uh, unlock another um, uh, another upgraded technology thing. The cool thing about doing that, the reason, well, part of the reason why I did that is because um, uh, the objectives here. I have two different objectives. I probably don't need this one to get another basic technology. I already have plenty, and I would really love to get this one to upgrade, um, to up some of my population. Because um, I could have got it to six this this round, but I really need to do that that last invasion step that I'm, I'm about to perform. Um, do I need to have... Actually, I might not have needed to... Yeah, I do, because otherwise uh, this sector is in trouble. Uh, so I need to get the Voidborn down to only one fleet power attacking me. Um, okay, so that is one option here. Uh, next option, I'm going to prevail. Uh, so I need to spend two energy and one credit. That is going to be one energy and two credits. Things are looking dire on the money front. Uh, in order to upgrade one of my glory tokens and then perform an invasion. So let's upgrade this three to a four. Uh, it doesn't really matter, except that um, as you go up, you're going to want to... Uh, you, you may have to discard one when you get to more than four. So having a couple of, of really high ones is better than having a ton of low ones. So uh, I usually just upgrade my highest one first. I haven't found a good reason to do otherwise so far. Then I am going to uh, move this sentry in and I'm going to move in with one of my corvettes, one of my fleet power worth of corvettes, and I'll move that in there. Um... Now we go into combat. So nothing on the approach step because there's uh, nothing here dealing approach damage. Remember, sentries only deal approach damage uh, in defense, so they're not going to do anything. Then we calculate an initiative. I have two. They have one. I'll deal one damage to them. They're out of fleet power. I win that combat. Nice and easy. It, it goes really quick once you know how everything kind of works. I assume with a four-player game when everybody's got different combat techs and things, that, that might be... Uh, less fun. I don't actually know if I needed to play, to play that, to flip that trade token, actually, now that I'm looking at it, but okay. Uh, I think I had a plan. I'll get that one. That's going to give me... I'm up to nine. Look at that. Halfway. Halfway. And that was my prevail action. And then because I flipped my trade token, I get to take the uh, the third option here. Uh, take a trade token and then move a corruption. So I am going to take a trade token and I will use it to get either two money or two science or any of these things below here. Should I just continue using trade tokens to get food? <laughs> I'm about to run out of food. That's the thing. Um, I do want... To drop a food in a minute. So maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. So maybe I should turn it into science or credits, although I'm not sure what I'm going to use science for in the next cycle because I haven't really thought about it overly much. So I think I'm just going to take credits for now because it is useful for everything other than upkeep. I am going to run out of food in a moment. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That'll do. Uh, and then move a corruption. So I can move a corruption from one of these sectors, which will make it pure, which means I'll score it in a second. I am going to move corruption from here. There's two flip power in here, right? And put it on the decontamination chambers. I think. Actually, give me two seconds because I do just want to check something. Um, the game does have this awesome glossary that comes with it that explains what everything does. What I just want to know is on the um, on the decontamination chambers, I can store two corruption on it. 
At the beginning of the evaluation phase, you may remove a corruption token from here. Corruption on this card does not count as on your map. That's what I needed to hear. Those were the words I needed. So because I can store up to two corruption on there, I'm just going to move this one over here. See, I had a plan. I had a plan the whole time. Uh, now, at the end of my turn, I need to put this trade token that I just got somewhere. I'm going to drop it here. And I need to put this trade token back where I found it. And this is where, if I had a trade nexus, I think I get the bonus for that. I'm not sure if you do get the bonus after you flipped it. Again, the awesome glossary will have that information in it. Let's see if I can find it very quickly because obviously it's not part of the game at the moment. So we don't really want to talk about it too much. Uh, it just says when you return a trade token to the galactic board. So I'm guessing, yes, I'm guessing that would work which would be very good. Those decontamination chambers, unfortunately... Oh no, no, this is great. Um, they will be available during cycle three. However, that is three actions off of my politics card, which was my third focus card for the round. I am now uh, out of focus uh, actions. So if I look at this, uh, I can only have four. Um, so that is the, the end of the um, phase B for me, the focus phase. Moving on to phase C, the evaluation. So, first thing that happens is a fleet with uh, one fleet power worth of Voidborn are going to come after me. Now, can they win anywhere? Because that is the, uh, the first thing to look at. Actually, the first thing to look at is what sectors are vulnerable, which is something I didn't talk about in the first cycle. In order for the Voidborn to actually skirmish you, they have to be able to come into a sector that you control, which means they have to be in one of this, they have to be adjacent to another sector. There's only one sector at the moment that is adjacent to a sector with Voidborn fleet power, it's this one. Um, so even though this sector is still corrupted, uh, this this sector here is going to, um, I, I can't go in there. Uh, they, they can only come from here. So only this sector is vulnerable. There is this thing here, which is a void storm that makes these two sectors not adjacent to each other. Uh, so I only have one sector that is adjacent to a Voidborn controlled sector. So they can only attack here. Now if a fleet of one, uh, if one fleet power worth of Voidborn come in here, uh, we do initiative. Uh, we do the approach step, there's nothing. Um, we do initiative, I have two, they have one. I win initiative, I deal one damage to them. We recalculate their initiative, they have nothing. So I win. And again, that is the, like... That is because I managed to deal with the corruption that I took on early in, early in the cycle. If I'd taken that on and not been able to deal with it, ooh, I would have been in trouble uh, there. I might have lo lost a sector. And if it looked like that was likely to happen, then, um, then I might have removed the corruption from somewhere else. But as it is, this is where we're at. Um, okay, so I win. I don't get any bonuses for winning or, or doing anything at the moment, uh, although I would, I would love to. Um, let's look at my upkeep. My upkeep at the moment, I've only got one on the board. I haven't filled up any of these other upkeep spaces, which is good. One on the board. This one's covered by a trade token. Uh, two, three, four, five. I happen to have five food, which is good because I am now completely skint. Look at that. I've got no, no, uh, basic resources left at all. I'm glad. Uh, that I believe in cycle three, I should be able to get my production card happening. And my production levels are decent at the moment. Uh, it's just unfortunate that I'm not going to be able to build more guilds before I produce. So I'm actually only going to have probably three food, which is not great. Um, it is what it is. Okay. So I have paid for my uh, for my upkeep. Here's the thing. Uh, you, you lose three influence for every upkeep that you don't pay. You can't choose not to pay. So if you can afford it, you have to pay your upkeep. Uh, and then you only lose three influence uh, for any that is, is left over at the end. Step three of evaluation, we are going to evaluate the galactic event. Do I have nine or more population in pure sectors? I sure do. Look at this. Three, five, nine, 12. I've got 12. Crushed it. Do I have three or more technologies? Pretty sure I do. Look at this. Shields, sentries, and decontamination chambers. Oh, hang on. Uh, one of the things decontamination chambers says is during evaluation, you can remove corruption from this card. Let's chuck that over there for now. So now there's only one corruption on there, which means I do have space for another one on my decontamination chambers. 
I, I really like that these technologies start to tell a story about your empire. Like we protect our ships, uh, we we uh, defend our borders, and we decontaminate. That's 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 what House Valness is all about. Uh, and also, we stomp all over the Voidborn, all over the all over the map. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. So I can gain a basic technology here, or I can. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna activate a fleet power either way. Then I can gain a basic technology, or I can uh, upgrade um, my civilian population somewhere. So I mean, I do have this uh, this agenda here, which is gonna score me six in uh, five influence for getting someone up to six. But I'm actually not certain that I'm gonna score much off this one at all. And I don't know that I need more uh, production of materials because I do currently already produce ten when I produce it. Whereas going down here is going to increase everything else, and I'm about to do a production. Uh, so I really want this to go up. As much as it might be a suboptimal play, everybody can complain about it in the comments. Okay, so I get one food, one energy, and I do get one materials anyway. So really all that did was mean that I'm going to get four food, which makes it closer that I'm going to be able to pay my upkeep at the end of cycle three. Uh, I can always pay with materials. Looks like I'm going to have a lot left over. We will have a look. Uh, and uh, don't forget to, to activate a fleet power as well so I don't complain about it as I'm prone to do that is the galactic event galactic event is now done we are getting ready for cycle 3 but there is one step in the evaluation phase left we uh, need to score our pure agendas and we have a, a few although I don't know that they're going to score all that well so we're going to get three influence for every pure sector that we own. I think at this stage we own four. One, two, three, four. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so what was that? Three per, so another 12. I'm just going to type this one so that you don't have to hear the mouse click so many times. What is happening? Why am I getting a zero there? Oh, because it, my cursor was in the wrong spot. All right. 72. 72 uh, influence. Uh, I'm going to get one for every sector with the sector defense. I still only have the one sector defense, so uh, that's no good. I'm going to get one for that. I'm going to get uh, two for every sector with a shipyard. I've only got two, uh, so that's going to be another, what, four? Bring me up to 77. Now, if I have eight or more production yield on materials, I'm going to get five influence. I do. Brings me up to 82. Then if I have, uh, for every sector where I've got two or more fleet power. So I've got two in here and I've got two in here. I've only got one in here. So I think, I think that's only two sectors. I don't think this is going all that, all that great. Uh, but that is another 10 influence. So that brings me up to uh, 92, which is nice. Now, uh, do I have any population in a pure sector uh, at six population? I do not, so I don't get anything for that. And is my uh, is my society track in uh, higher than level zero? It is not, so I get nothing for that final agenda. So I paid two food for it, but it didn't gain me anything. Maybe it would have been better to throw that away. Uh, I'm sure I'm hearing screams in the comments about that now. However, uh, I have now been going for, it uh, looks like, an hour and a half, so I'm going to uh, stop the recording, and we will come back for cycle three in the next video.